There is a madness in Ofsted. Ofsted is the organisation that inspects schools and its intention is to make sure there's a standard of excellence throughout the school system. But there is madness when schools can be ranked in the top um, in the top 10, in the top five, in the Sunday Times best list, and at the same time be downgraded by Ofsted. It makes no sense at all. So the story of Ruth Perry, uh, head of Caversham Primary School in Reading, who took her own life, this is so um, distressing to, to read. As somebody who's, I've been through two or three inspections, I think. They're always a misery, and it's not always clear what the inspectors are looking for. Very often schools, particularly in the private sector, will appoint uh, head teachers who have a foot in the door of the Ofsted system and who themselves conduct Ofsted examinations so they know what to expect. It's a game, in other words. It's a game. So either Ofsted, like Ofcom, is doing a proper job and helping to promote good standards, or it's just a box-ticking exercise where people are getting, quote, their house in order so they get through whatever ridiculous criteria are put forward. I don't think we should have any confidence in this system at all. Um, as I say, I've been through it a few times. I've seen it from the inside. I've seen it from the outside. I've heard of people's lives being turned upside down by the nonsense of an Ofsted in inspection. I've heard of people... Uh, who are extremely efficient and effective teachers being um, made utterly miserable by the demands of these Ofsted inspectors, some of whom have nothing to do with education, some of whom are pursuing their own little vendetta. They are given absolute power. Nobody should have that power over somebody else, particularly over professionals doing their job in a professional way. If there are problems, then there are so many other ways for uh, those problems to come to the fore. Parents, for example, can make complaints and those complaints can be investigated. Indeed, those complaints can trigger an Ofsted inspection. But this routine inspection malarkey, it's a, um, it's a nonsense. And teachers are spending more of their time completing silly forms than they are doing lessons. We need a complete rethink of the way education works in our country and probably um, in many other countries as well. In, the, in, in this post-digital age, in this age when we take uh, digital media for granted, we should be using digital media effectively in schools instead. We are churning out these ridiculous and absurd um, bits of paper where children fill in uh, blanks here and there. I forget even what we call them now. They're hopeless. Produced by organisations like Twinkle and I, I, I can't even remember some of the other organisations as well, but uh, this, this form filling, not only by teachers, but also by children. This isn't learning. Learning is about exercising creative skills and developing the creative skills of children of any age, rather than the sort of factory production where you rubber stamp what is conventional. We need to rethink how we examine. We need to rethink how we teach in this age when we have so many resources. I find when I go into a school and I teach a lesson, that very often the children are already in advance. They, they, they already know they've got better resources than I have. We're, we're doing a sort of race to see who can, who can get um, the best internet stories. Children are better at that than I am. And they will get there first. So let them. My job as a teacher is to mentor and to get the best from every individual student, no matter what the age, no matter what the ability. And that may not necessarily be um, for them to conform to quote a particular syllabus, which is out of date anyway. That is the problem. 
And when you're looking at English, I mean, I was head of English for a while um, in the last school I taught at. When you're looking at English, the whole thing is out of date. And we need, again, to rethink, to, um, to find the best, the best poetry, the best books, the best sources of English literature that we can possibly present to children and to um, students across the board, from school through to university. And we need to stretch students' creative ability as well. Analysis and creation, these are the two skills. And we should be able to get a student to communicate as enthusiastically about what they've seen uh, last night on reality TV as they can to dissect and analyse a Dickens novel. Because, frankly, Shakespeare was the popular entertainment of the 16th century. Now it's fast and furious. If you can't analyse and uh, decode what's going on in Fast and Furious 9, then frankly you should get out of the classroom. You certainly shouldn't be teaching. Um, Fast and Furious 9 is the, um, is the literature of today and I think possibly, um, uh, possibly quite a number of computer games as well. This is the language of today. This we should be understanding. Uh, we should be literate in the modern um, tools, the modern language of today. And we should equally be uh, analysing rap, but we should be analysing rap in the understanding that it has its origins, I think, in Chaucer and Alexander Pope. Uh, it's purposed towards a, a particular movement that, um, uh, that starts in the 1970s, 1980s, 1990s, but its origins are much deeper. And if we can't teach basic prosody, the basic analysis of the difference between an I am and a trochee, then we are failing our students. But maybe all that stuff should be online. And maybe a good classroom teacher should be able to press a button and the appropriate authority, an authoritative lesson can be streamed into the classroom. The teacher is there to mentor those children, those students who are watching that. I think that's the way forward. And I think Ofcom's focus is utterly and tragically wrong. Utterly wrong.